So whenever you're going, uh, you're doing like a team uh, rookie initiation, something like that, hazing is when it goes too far. It's when you make people do really gross things, really embarrassing things, like beyond like the reasonable limit. Hopefully by me giving you some guiding principles to follow here throughout this video, you'll better be equipped to handle these tough situations moving forward if it ever does happen to you, God forbid, in hockey. What's going on guys, this is Brayden from Advancement Hockey Advising here. And today we'll be actually talking about a really important video that I probably should have done a long time ago. And that's related to everything hazing and bullying in hockey. So as much as hockey is a fantastic sport, it teaches us so many life lessons and really helps us cherish the relationships along the way. Unfortunately, there's some bad that comes with it, like any good thing in life. And that is hazing and bullying. Now I think most of us understand what bullying is, but what's hazing? So hazing basically is anything related to uh, initiation ritual so whenever you're going uh, you're doing like a team uh, rookie initiation something like that hazing is when it goes too far is when you make people do really gross things really embarrassing things like beyond like the reasonable limit you know that's hazing uh, luckily like there's been a bit of a crackdown on hazing uh, the past like 10 years or so especially in NCAA hockey and junior hockey is really starting to crack down on it but unfortunately it does still happen because some people still don't speak up so it's a topic that's really important to cover and if it ever does happen to you definitely speak up whether it's bullying hazing whatever you want to you know handle it the right way I'd say like maybe speaking up right away like it depends on on the scenario but if any of these things happen to you you want to have a good framework to go about it it happened to me back in the day and unfortunately I didn't really handle it too well because I didn't know how to handle it it was new to me right and uh, hopefully by me giving you some guiding principles to follow here throughout this video you'll better be equipped to handle these tough situations moving forward if it ever does happen to you god forbid in hockey now I know that I always ask people to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, all that stuff. But this video is a little bit more serious. And the reason why I'm going to ask you guys to do this is this actually a really important topic that I want every single hockey player that plays junior, college hockey, whatever it is, to be aware of. It's a really important issue. And I want you guys to absolutely destroy that like button. Not for my social clout, anything like that. Sometimes it ties into it. But for this video in particular, I really want to spread the message here so people understand how to handle these situations as best as possible. All right, so first things first to deal with hazing and bullying. One, and a lot of people don't tell you this, but it's to work on yourself, both on the mental side and the physical side. Teammates really respect people that have their habits in place, that are in shape. It doesn't matter if you know how to fight or not, but that, that look in shape and know how to fight, that does make a difference, okay? And somebody that's mentally strong, that's confidence. Teammates respect those guys. And as a turn, like if somebody respects you, they're much less likely to bully you or to haze you. It can still happen, don't get me wrong, but you make your, your chances much less likely if you're physically strong, in shape, and mentally you're really sharp. If somebody gives you a, a quick insult or whatever, you're quick to fire back or you laugh it off. If you can do that, then people will respect you, your teammates, and uh, the chances of you getting hazed and bullied are much, much less. It can still happen, but it's just much less at this point. Now let's touch on initiations a little bit. Now there's this misconception out there that every single initiation is bad, it should be shut down and teams should be suspended. I don't think that's the case, right? I've been through initiations myself um, you know there is one that was definitely borderline hazing I would say but most of them were totally fine and if you're in initiation like obviously if you're uncomfortable at any moment whatsoever just don't be afraid to speak up and say hey guys I'm not sure about the situation you know if you actually bring it with genuine concern people might stop and think about it okay I know it can be tough in certain settings but sometimes it's good to speak up if you're really uncomfortable but that being said most initiations are things like taking a bite out of a lemon or you know telling an embarrassing story something like that you know those things are totally fine and actually usually bring guys closer together. That's the whole reason why initiations first started, started taking place, not only in hockey, but in many things in life. But where it goes too far is when the initiations start to feel forced, coerced, like really gross things. You know, I'm not going to mention on this YouTube channel, so I don't get demonetized, but there, there's some really like nasty things that are going on. When it starts to go over the border of reasonable and your like alarm bells start going off, okay, this isn't okay, this isn't right, somebody could get hurt, anything like that at that point definitely speak up be that person because other rookies or other people going through the initiation might be thinking the same thing okay so don't be afraid of speaking up to the guys and if they're not being reasonable uh you know maybe take it to the coach if you have to but you know kind of evaluate it with your sense of judgment here all right so that pretty much covers the hazing part of it if you guys have questions on it definitely comment down below or send us an email now moving on to more of the bullying part so let's say you got a teammate that's kind of giving you some trouble okay let's say you're in shape you're mentally strong all this stuff but they're still like kind of picking 
on you, okay? That, this happened to me quite a few times in my career, actually. Number one, the best defense you have is to kind of just give it back to them, okay? If they, if they like go out of their way to, you know, you know, make some jokes about you and all that stuff or really picking on you, really just dish it right back, you know, laugh it off, whatever, if it's a one-off, but if it's continuous, dish it right back to them, see how they respond. Sometimes that alone works very well, okay? They, they build a sense of respect for you and they stop targeting you. And um, if that doesn't work, if you see it's really getting to like the next level and they're really going out of their way to make your life miserable, take uh, some time to talk about it with them one-on-one. -on -one. And don't approach them like, you know, full force that you're gonna fight them, all that stuff. That's not usually the way to go. Usually if you get in a room with them one-on-one -on -one and say, hey man, listen, I feel like there's some tension between us. You know, I feel like we should probably talk about this. Like what, what's going on? Why, you know, I feel like you're, you're coming at me for whatever reason. If there's something I'm doing that's annoying you, whatever reason, just let me know and I'll, I'll go about, you know, taking the steps to, to change whatever I'm doing, you know? If you go about it that way, if you're taking ownership and you're, you know, not hitting their ego pretty much, at that point, usually they'll be honest with you. They'll be like, listen, man, like there's something you're doing, like these things you're doing as a rookie, like, you know, I feel like you're taking away from the vets, blah, blah, blah. And they give you their reasons. And it kind of, at that point, they're giving you the keys to what to do next. You know, you'd be like, oh my God, I never even realized this. I'll, I'll definitely keep this into consideration. You know, a dialogue like this that goes on, usually by doing this, it actually deescalates the entire thing. Okay, like nine times out of 10, this will work if you meet with a person alone and with genuine respect without uh, attacking them. Usually that solves the situation in terms of bullying. Now, unfortunately, sometimes even doing that doesn't solve the situation. It might improve it for a couple days or a week or two weeks or so, but then the same habits start forming again and again, okay? If they're still not getting the message, try meeting with them one more time, okay? At least one more time, meet with them and be like, hey man, and, and be a bit more aggressive in this one. Say, hey man, like I know we talked about this, you know, but right now it's, it's really like starting to get to me and I feel like something needs to change here. Again, is there anything else that's bothering you that I'm doing, but like we can't keep going on like this. And if it does, then you know, we're, it's gonna escalate and we're gonna have to go to different measures. So hopefully by then, if you talk to them one more time, it's gonna calm them down and they're gonna stop. Usually it does, but it's happened to me two times in my life where even by doing this, and I, I didn't do it perfectly either. So I probably would have calmed down if I would have done it at the, like with this type of skill. But after that, if that still doesn't work, definitely um, you, you can consider either two options. You can consider either going to tell your coach about it, or you can consider defending yourself if ever you feel like your, your safety is in danger, okay? We're gonna to touch on that in a second, but let's start with the coach. So there's a pro to talking to the coach about. It. Usually, if you do talk to the coach about it, they, they can probably nip it in the butt pretty quick and if it's done the right way. But what I would suggest is that you meet with the coach privately first, and then you guys can meet together, all together in the same room, not where it's just the coach and the player. Sometimes you can do that, but honestly, from my experience, meeting all together and talking about it with the coach is probably better because it feels like you're not just tattling on the player. But the, like I just mentioned here, the one significant con of telling the coach is the player is gonna probably feel like you're tattling on them, that you're snitching them, and then it might make things a lot worse. And it, I did that once before, it completely made the situation worse. And, and then I had not only them, but other parts of the team, other members of the team coming after me, okay? So it was really, it, it's really touchy how you go about this. So hopefully it does resolve if you talk to the coach, but sometimes it escalates to the like the ultimate level, I would call it, where you do feel like your safety's in a, a bit in danger. You know, you feel like these guys are targeting you, they're giving you cheap shots on the ice, they're always trying to, you know, make you look bad and all that stuff. They're really like bullying you hard. At that point, if you feel like your safety's in danger, and I know this might be a really controversial opinion, and I'm not promoting like going fighting people and all that stuff. Honestly, it's it's not my style, not at all. I'm like the nicest, most loving person ever, and I never seek fights. But if you feel like your safety is at, at risk, and you've tried all the other things, sometimes defending yourself is what you need to do. So for me, for example, at my second year of college, me and another teammate, we're, we're kind of both fighting for a spot in the lineup. And uh, I don't know, it just it just kind of escalated pretty quickly. And I tried talking to him a couple times, oh no, everything's fine, everything's fine. But you know, he was still like kind of snaking me in the back and, and coming after me. And then at some point we just kind of dropped the gloves. We went at it and uh, it, literally it was the, the most, um, it was the most like uh, <laughs> anticlimactic fight ever. It was literally drop it, tussle a little bit, and then we, we both kind of fell to the ground. But just that action alone, honestly, completely dissipated dissipated the problem you know it, there was like a sense of mutual respect after and uh, it completely dissipated the tension so sometimes you do just have to defend yourself whether like a guy like guys are giving it to you you dish it back with a big hit and practice on one of them to send a message sometimes it might escalate to like a physical altercation as a fight you know whatever it is oftentimes at that point it'll just that usually is the the final factor where the tension dissipates
point. If at that point there's still a problem that people are still trying to fight you, all that stuff, consider like really talking to your coach about it. Say, hey, like I might need to, to change teams or I might like something needs to happen here. You know, if uh, like after that, if nothing resolves, but typically at that point, everything does resolve and that's how things escalate. Again, I am not promoting going out fighting guys all the time. It's not part of my DNA, honestly, but sometimes when you need to defend yourself, it does get to that point. And I do want to give this message to you guys because I I've been through it myself where I didn't defend myself and it went on way longer than it should have. Okay, so it's really important to go about that. You know, it's, it's just the honest truth. And I know some parents might probably unsubscribe from this channel here, but I just want to give you guys the honest truth and the best tools to deal with bullying and hazing altogether. All right, so let's do a quick recap of the three main messages I want you guys to get from this video. So unfortunately, bullying and hazing still exist today in hockey, but there are ways to deal with it. The number two thing is to really make sure you're physically and mentally strong. This way, you're much less likely to be uh, targeted from hazing and bullying uh, players on your team. And last but not least, you really wanna make sure you take the steps necessary that we outlined in this video to, uh, in terms of escalation, you wanna de-escalate as much as possible. You don't start with fighting guys right away. That's not the point. You really want to take a stepwise approach like we outlined in this video in terms of de-escalating the entire thing. And actually the last main message here is don't be afraid to speak up. If something's not right, whether it's hazing, bullying, you're trying these steps and it's not working, speak up if you need to, okay? It's really, really important to do that. Don't suffer in silence, speak up because it can really make a huge difference. All right guys, that is it for the video. I know it's a bit more of a serious topic here, but I really think it's important for people to have the proper tools necessary to deal with these unfortunate situations in hockey. With the proper tools, I think you guys will be able to have the best hockey career that you can and try and avoid this darker side of the sport. So if you like this video, if you haven't already, definitely destroy that like button. It goes a long way. We want a lot of people to see this video here. And I encourage you guys to subscribe and to hit that notification bell if you haven't already as well. If there's any you know situations you guys want to talk to us about, so any hazing situations, bullying situations that you've been a part of, anything like that, um, if you're comfortable with it, how you overcame it, you can drop a comment down below. Or if you're going through something yourself and you want to talk to us about it, definitely send us an email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible as to how you can kind of navigate it. So if you enjoyed this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you got value out of it and we'll catch you on that next one.